You know, I, I kind of want to do this a little different because I, I want to just sit and talk with you, just have some fun. Just two guys just talking about it, you know, just life. And then at the same time, can I tell you this now? Yeah. In the words of my old friend, this is pretty much the bomb diggity for me because I'm interviewing <laughs> the President of the United States on my own talk. So that's really good. Well, How have you been, though? It is great to see you, Steve. Yeah. I, and I'm, I'm, I'm doing great. And, you know, as you can see, it's Christmas uh, here in the White House. Yeah. And uh, it took me a long time putting all these decorations up. <laughs> you know, in between dealing with Afghanistan. And, <laughs> You've been hanging balls uh, on the tree. Absolutely. Yeah. I've yeah, been up all night. <laughs> do you Christmas shop? We do one Christmas trip. Uh, on Small Business Saturday, I usually go out there with the girls. And last couple of years, we've gone to bookstores. Okay. Because the nice thing about a bookstore is you can cover a lot of ground. You can get books for, you know, the six-year-old niece. You can yeah. get books for your mother-in-law. Yeah. And so, you know, we do a lot of shopping there. Um, now that I think about it, I should have, I guess, bought some of your books yeah. to give out as gifts. Yeah. So I, I apologize for that. No, well, you know, they're still for sale. <laughs> you still got me. We'll, we'll print them for you. <laughs> don't, don't get me wrong. Hey, you know, uh, the, the first lady was on my show, uh -huh. and she told us, she said that you're a little difficult to shop for. Is that true? Well, uh, th that's probably true. Uh, my whole attitude is the older you get, the harder you are to shop for, because if you wanted it, you would have bought it anyway. <laughs> right? Yeah, really. So I remember I used to, you know, have to shop for my grandmother, you know, uh, who, who's, who's passed now, but, yeah. you know, helped raise me. I loved her to death. But every Christmas I'd be thinking, now what does she want? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, so I'd end up buying her some little knick-knack or something. And she'd yeah. open it up and she'd say, oh, well, that's nice. Yeah. And then you'd see it off in the corner somewhere. Yeah. With the other stuff <laughs> With the other stuff that I'd bought. So uh, kids are easier to shop for, but it is also true that Michelle has been trying to you know, get me to wear more color and try to get me to be a little less conservative in my dressing style. Um, so she probably wants me to follow you know, your lead. But I was saying, this is, this is the most conservative I've ever seen you, Steve. This is my presidential yeah. interview suit. It looks sharp. Only have one. <laughs> Put it on and it's tight. <laughs> it's because I had planned on doing this interview six years ago, but <laughs> we hadn't quite got there yet. <laughs> hey, I heard a rumor too, man, that your grandmother yeah. and my mother have met in heaven and they're watching. They're watching right now? And I think they're pretty proud part. Well, I think they're definitely uh, looking down on us because you know, one of the things that you realize is how much any success you had depended on some critical people who were there Really? at critical times in your life. Really? You just don't uh, succeed in any endeavor unless you've got a team that's been supporting you. Yeah. Uh, and that's part of my political philosophy. It's really based on my own experience, which right. was if somebody hadn't been out there looking out for me, starting with my mom, my grandmother, my mm -hmm. grandfather, um, then I wouldn't have made it. You know, it, it wasn't because of, of my brilliance or something that uh, these things happen. It, it, it had to do with right. people investing in you. And so we've got to make sure we're investing in the next generation just like right. somebody invested in us. Yeah. yeah. I think you've been doing a pretty good job of it. Yeah. Well, that's, you know. That's the, the effort you're putting out there. That's for sure. Right. I think it's happening. Right. Well, it starts with your own kids, obviously. So, you know, Michelle and I, you know, we always say that as important as our jobs are as president and first lady, our most important job is, is mom and dad. And you know, the girls are getting old enough now where they don't need the 24-7 yeah. uh, monitoring, uh, and they've turned out to be great kids. But uh, How old are they now? Malia's 15. She'll be 16 in, in July. And uh, mm -hmm. Sasha's 12, will be 13 in June. Um, they're doing? doing great, but uh, they grow up so fast. Is she talking about driving? Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, the good news is that uh, Although in Chicago, you could get your permit when you're 15. Right. In DC, it's 16. But, but this shows that she, she may have potential as a lawyer sometimes. She said, you know, aren't we technically still residents <laughs> of Illinois? And I, and I explained, yeah, but we don't 
live there now, so you're going to have to yeah. abide by the D.C. rule. <laughs> uh, but she's doing great. They're both wonderful young ladies, and, and I give Michelle all the credit. I, I always say in our household, uh, you know, Michelle's management, I'm labor. You know, I, I basically do <laughs> yeah. what I'm told by her, uh, but she's always got a, a, a great game plan, and, and the girls are thriving as a result. Are you going to teach them to drive? Uh, probably not. You know, I have seen enough parents try to teach their kids to drive, and the combination of anxiety <laughs> and hollering yeah, and, yeah, you know, both sides just leaving the car unhappy after the fact, I figure it is better to, to you know, I just did give, it. Give, give it to a professional. So you did that. Yeah. My, how'd, how'd that go? Um, I took it to a parking lot. I set up the cones. Right. And I'm teaching them everything. She hits the cones a few times, and I kept getting on. I said, baby, you keep hitting the cones. She said, Dad, they're just cones. <laughs> it's nothing to do with that. could be the fender of a car. So she told me, just, just, just cones. cones. Now, why did you decide that you needed to do it? Was it just a point of pride that uh, I'm going to teach my child how to drive? Yeah, I, I thought that was good because I taught my oldest boys how to do it. Okay. And my daughter's a little bit different because I got to keep her occupied because, see, I, this dating thing, it's a concern. It's just a Are real you, concern. Is that something you're nervous about? Yeah, very much. Yeah. You? Well, uh, two things. One is uh, Malia and Sasha are very sensible, so I, I trust them to make mm. good, good decisions. And the second thing is uh, I've got men with guns following them around all the time. <laughs> so that, that kind of makes me a little less nervous about it. Could I use them? <laughs> Could I, what yeah, yeah, what yeah. do I got to do to get hey, some of these this, this, is, this is the main reason I ran for re-election. Because <laughs> you knew it was coming. I, I knew it was coming. I said, oh. let me just project out. You know, I'm, I'm going to have them covered for, uh, for most of high school. <laughs> <laughs>